Welcome to the Gadget Guys podcast. Uh, today we're doing some, we're continuing our series of doing interviews with fans of some of our favorite Japanese bands. And today we got Jalen or ja- Javelin, <laughs> or however you say it on there, right? And you're saying the it was a, a missed typo by your phone, and you just like went with it, right? Yeah, so a lot of times when I write my name, it's usually spelled J-A-E-L-I-N. Yeah. But because it's not a common spelling, it always autocorrects a javelin. So I was like, screw it. Let me just use that as an alias. So. Heck yeah. Today he's going to be telling us uh, about his journey being in Japan and how he discovered all these Japanese bands that we all know and love. And I was actually shocked with how many bands you've known when I was looking at so- some of your social media. And... You also are a guitar player, on top of that, and you've been you've been playing gigs. So see, you got some footage of you playing some shows and stuff like that, and uh, we're gonna get into all that. So, without further ado, um, welcome Jalen to the podcast. Go ahead and tell everyone about yourself, what you do, what you're currently working on, and all that good stuff. Thank you for having me on here, Alan. Uh, my name is Jalen, but I go by Javelin. Um, I was born and raised in New York still currently living in new york um i'm big into music uh my musical story is a little mixed um so i started playing guitar probably around the age of 12 or 13 in middle school mm. and i originally started playing right-handed but, oh, okay um, cross dominant so uh two years ago i switched to left-handed out of comfort and that's how i've been playing since so uh, when people ask me how long are you playing how long have you been uh, playing guitar I usually say two or so years because uh, I play the fan guitar. So if they hand me that, I can play it that way. But if you give me a right-handed guitar, I also can play basic lead, simple chords, stuff like that as well. So yeah. this is a cool party trick, <laughs> if anything. But um, I definitely prefer playing guitar left-handed. So you're um, you're dominantly left-handed then, and you just happen uh, to be playing right-handed the entire time, or uh, kind of the reverse. So um. When I was a kid, like when I first started learning how to read and write, apparently I used to use both hands mm. for a while. And then um, knowing me, I probably looked around and saw that most people write with their right hand. So most tools are also right handed. So that's how I developed. But as I got older, I started going back to that habit of using. Ah. Oh. Uh, spoons, forks, knives, chopsticks with both hands. Uh, I can write with both. I'm better with right-handed writing. But uh-huh. I can do both. It's not too bad. Um, and with guitar, I'm close to even with both. I think left is starting to get to the point where the comfort is kicking in, and now it's probably um, on the upward trend, I would assume. That's but, uh, wild. So you actually you work on it. You actually make sure you practice left-handed and right-handed. Um, well, with right handed, every now and then I would, um, like pick it up. I'm not the best guitar player, so I'm just showing you an example, like you know, playing, yeah, left handed, right? But then right handed, if I just flip it and you know, the guitar is probably upside down, yeah, you can still so, do it. I can still do it. Now, I will say, left handed right now is probably more natural because that's how I practice like 90 percent of the time oh okay but every now and then i might noodle around or grab a righty guitar because <laughs> most of them are right-handed anyway and just start you know like yeah some simple licks i'm still not the best player in the world uh, that's probably gotcha. the goal maybe but um yeah that's i guess my guitar story i play a little bit of bass as well but mm. as you know bass the notes are the same as the guitar at least a four string bass yeah but um in terms of uh like creating music um what year is it now 2023 oh my gosh um <laughs> yeah it's wild <laughs> yeah i'm like it's almost 2024 like, oh my god i know in like what three weeks <laughs> out from oh, this oh, recording oh, oh no yeah. oh. <laughs> we got three weeks man uh, <laughs> we're already gonna be there <laughs> at one point it was just the band made us tour 2022 and then it's like nope yeah. now we're in the summer nope now we're in the winter. it's already been a whole year since that whole they've had a whole nother u.s tour like i know i first yeah. met you back at um yeah it was 2022 year, right? yeah it was 2022 and it's then we met again 
just this year, right? We met again at the Baby Metal concert. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was like two months ago. Oh yeah, that's two months ago. <laughs> that feels like three years ago. Like, it, I, it I don't does, even like... know time anymore because I'm like, the bandmate stuff feels like a decade ago. And then the Baby Metal concert feels like a couple of years ago. But no, it was just a couple months ago. And wow. for, well, as you know, for New York, for me, it was just wild because meeting baby oh, metal I yeah. was <laughs> like I th- that doesn't even feel still doesn't feel real it, I don't even I don't know a lot of this stuff just feels like all imaginary like this is not real stuff happening but yeah so yeah, while life, I can't 2022 man simulation man. guys <laughs> it is it, I think it is <laughs> yeah so 2023 um so yeah seven now yeah seven years ago um when I was in college I studied abroad in Japan Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in northern Japan in Akita Prefecture. Okay. And when I was there, this is back in my right hand guitar days. So, but when I was there, I um played in I think three or four bands. So I played in the brass band, and then three, uh, like rock bands. So okay. during, um, so I stayed during the fall semester of 2016. During mm. that time. Uh, I think we had three to four like live performances in the school. So you ever watched like uh, like Payon or um, like Bochy the Rock? Have you seen those shows? I've heard of them. I've heard of Bochy the Rock. I they haven't heard other one, but go on. Oh yeah, with Kayon and uh, Bochy the Rock, with shows like that, usually they're in like Japanese uh, high schools, right? And then oh, okay. or they play like a little school festival show, or they would play a show at like a local club or things like that. So. Uh, my university had performances like that so we performed um i performed with the band at the school festival i performed at like the autumn show and then like the winter show so i was able to play in about three or four different bands which was really fun because not only was it cool to to, like intermingle with uh, a lot of japanese students and students from other countries like the usa yeah um so did you learn japanese Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been um studying since right before that time, so I've been studying probably seven years on and off. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you get to still practice it a lot while being in New York, or? Uh, no, <laughs> not as so much. <laughs> I mean, aside from reconnecting with my old friends and calling them up and stuff like that, um, I don't get a lot of opportunities to speak in person. Every yeah. now and then, I might have an encounter if I'm at like the japanese bookstore if i go to a japanese restaurant i might just shout at the staff and they either do one of two things either they'll just um like talk to me in english which makes sense i'm in america right yeah yeah or they just naturally switch to japanese and just tell me everything tell me the price oh it's like ten dollars they all that straight in japanese i'm like you know what that's i like that because it feels like yeah i can get practice that way but um so that was the first time I was in Japan back in college, back in mm-hmm. oh Lord, seven years ago. Yeah. And then about three and a half or almost four years ago now, I was um, living there as a teacher. So I lived there for a year in the southern side in um, Wakayama Prefecture, right outside of Osaka. Oh, okay. So um, I've been in Japan for about a uh, total time, probably a year and a half. And uh, my most recent time was actually this time last month. I went on a short little like week vacation there. So I got to reconnect with old friends and hit up a lot of cool music spots, which brings me to um going to the it's like the guitar district in Tokyo. Oh, okay. What's um, the guitar district? Yeah. Like? Uh, I probably would have to look up the name again. I honestly forgot it. But there's a district in Tokyo where they have tons of used music like instrument shops and like mm-hmm. record shops and stuff like that so uh one of them i think they featured it in one of the animes like in k-on there's a oh, girl okay. that um mio she plays bass left-handed and there's always oh. a joke because they're like oh you can't find any instruments and then she's like always angry and then one of her friends in the show they go to that guitar district and they point out a shop that has this place says lefties only all lefty guitar and she's like oh my god this is great i can get a bass and a mm. guitar so I went to shops like that where um, they have a lot of used instruments, guitars, basses, um, some drum equipment, um, violins, brass instruments as well. And it so was the- cool because uh, I actually found a little lefty section just like they had in the anime. And I was like, that's pretty cool. That's based on reality, right? Yeah, that is and, pretty um, awesome that they did that. Yeah, the fact that they 
I know they're making like a fictional show, but the fact that they're true to the real life like equivalent is really cool because like when you go there, you actually get to go to these places, you know. And um, I remember oh. just looking around, you know, being immersed in like just seeing a big instrument shop because I don't know about you, but out here there's not a lot of instrument shops really. There's a few, but yeah, you know. You gotta, you gotta kind of, you gotta look for them, you know. And I wonder if maybe in Japan, for people that are left-handed, they kind of lean into it rather than try to force them to do be right-handed. Isn't there something like in the U.S. history where they like force a bunch of people to be right-handed if they're left? Yeah, it was like a some like superstition, like it's bad to be uh, left-handed. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) To be very honest, Japan, I would say is a little bit worse at it um, because certain um practices are made to be done right-handed so like using chopsticks things like that like a lot of people do things naturally right-handed and i Mm. have people that i know that were naturally left-handed and were forced to write right-handed even like like people here in the u.s did the same thing yeah but i feel like in japan because of this more uh, i feel like there's more of like a group conformity yeah that uh, there's way less lefties I've noticed in like music. I only yeah. the only one I know offhand is Waka. Yeah, uh, she's the basis for what's that band? Ah, they, they're they're really good. You probably know them. Uh, um, we could probably pull up uh, the name of the band, but they're starting to break free right now and they're getting really big. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because uh, only of course the only left-handed guitarist that comes to my mind right away is Jimi Hendrix, but that's all, I mean he's passed away. But that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, yeah, in the U.S., I think there's a good amount. It's not a whole lot, but there's definitely a little more. In Japan, I haven't seen too many, um, but mm-hmm. I remember being in that record shop, you know, looking at the electric guitars and just yeah. absorbing that atmosphere of, like, an instrument shop, you know, music. And in the background, I started hearing baby metal playing, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. They're playing the live album, and then I walk out. So that was your first hear, time hearing baby metal? Was in a shop. Oh no no oh <laughs> no that was uh this was just last month uh oh, okay. but um then I I walked out of that shop and I heard love bites as well and that's when I was like oh this is like because that's the first time I probably heard love bites outside of like me listening to them yeah but um in terms of uh, me being exposed to uh, Japanese rock bands especially like these female Japanese rock bands um I have to go back to that you know college time yeah. back in 2016 when I was studying abroad in Japan my first time there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, my buddy Nathan, if you're watching this, bro, much love, man. Good friend of mine. Um, when I was there, he was showing me some music, right? And keep in mind, like, because I'm kind of like exposed to Japanese culture a lot, even before I was able to um, live there and go to school there. Um, how real quick? How many yeah, years I, were you there? A uh, total of about a year and a half. So year and a half, about okay. half a year for school. In a year for work. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, my buddy Nathan, uh, he was showing me some bands, right? And I'm not really thrown off by seeing a lot of all female bands, just because I know um, in Japanese culture, especially in school, um, mm-hmm. kids have a lot of opportunities to learn how to play instruments, a lot of like music based things. So when they yeah. find their hobby, they can stick to it, which is awesome. Wish yeah. we had more of that here, honestly. But yeah, um, yeah so he shows me this band and they were in maid outfits which didn't throw me off too much to be honest i was more like hmm they're wearing maid outfits they're really gonna sound good that type of thing yeah and then yeah. he pulls up a video and he's kind of like yo look at the name of this song like i was like oh that's funny <laughs> let me listen to this so he starts playing yolo and he's like yeah this band um um they came to a local convention near me called sakura mm-hmm. and that was their first u.s performance and i got to like be a part of it and meet them and see the show so like this band is really good and i'm like I-, I like this like seeing them i thought they were gonna sound more i guess cutesy or you know but then when i heard the the tones come in i was like that stuff is it's heavy yeah, <laughs> yeah the guitar oh, tone man in. yeah yeah, so that kind of that got me a little bit, but I still wasn't fully sold. I thought it was more like a flash in the pan type of thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, fast forward about a year or so later, when I'm back in the U.S., um, uh, I'm going through the YouTube algorithms. I'm listening to some Scandal. 
That's one of the first groups I listened to like a long time ago, five, ten years ago. Okay. So that I'm was a, a big, that was your uh, first Little Alchemist fan. Ah, mm -hmm. okay, okay. So that was like the first you were a fan of was Scandal was one of your first bands. Yeah, because they did yeah. the uh, I know they did a Bleach opening, but they also did an ending for Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and that mm. one I was like, yeah, this is a great song. And I thought yeah. it was one of those bands where it's just like the uh, girls singing and guys behind them. But then I saw them, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is a full band. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 this is an all girl band. Oh shoot, it's nice. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I was. This is um probably around 2017 2018 i'm um, just going through youtube youtube's algorithm looking up some scandal videos and then some little suggestions you know youtube suggestions start popping up recommendations yeah. just like um the top 10 uh japanese girl rock band so then i see um band made real existence and i'm like once again the appearance comes back in i'm like ah, i've heard one of their songs but uh, i was like yeah. you know what let's do it yeah, I click on that, and then it's the live video of, of Real Existence. So yeah. it starts playing, and then you hit a drum, you hear Psyche like, like yelling at the crowd, and then it kicks in. I see like who is Economy and Miku head banging. I'm, 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 my jaw like dropped when I saw that. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Why did I wait so long to re listen to this band? Yeah. And that was it. From there, I think. That was right around or right before a world domination came out mm -hmm. and then it was like a snowball man i just kept just following them yeah just kept on coming and then with bandmate in particular um that was around probably as i said 2017 2018 um they announced shortly after that their first u.s tour like the full u.s tour and i lucked out because there was a new york show but <laughs> I discovered it a little late, so I missed out on um they had like VIP meet and greet and sign tickets. So I missed out on oh. that for the first night. But I was able to get a resale ticket for the first night. So I, I was happy about that. I forgot that they did a meet and greet before, so that's crazy. So yeah, you saw first, them when uh, they, mm -hmm. you saw them when they first came here to US. Um yeah, their first US tour. I US know tour. they played uh, like a, a show or two before that. 2019 oh, okay. u.s tour but um i remember finding out a little late and i was a little disappointed but i was happy i was able to get a ticket but yeah. then once the whole tour sold out they had an announcement They're like oh we got a special date for the tour i was like oh that's cool and it says new york i'm like oh and it's like 200 <laughs> people only i'm like oh and they're like vip you know oh, um the the special um fan club members only i was like oh waiting online Got it, snagged my ticket. So I went to both nights in 2019. It was in, oh, around okay. September. Uh, the first night, I was just, once again, um, general mission because I missed out on the VIP. But um, that show was at, uh, I want to say, Gramercy Theater. Yes. Yeah, Gramercy yeah. Gramercy Theater. That's where yeah. it was. Did so um, When they did the meet and greets before, did they let them take pictures and stuff? Or was that just meeting them um, no so um the first night i didn't go to a meet and greet but i know they didn't do um any photos but uh um, that's interesting yeah normally meet yeah, and greets was... normally mean photos you know taking a photo with them yeah yeah it was just you know a little weird and it should be able to do it but um maybe it's for like the fans i don't know what the fans feel like left yeah. out or something like that but yeah that first night it was dope because like it was a nice it was a sold out crowd it's like a thousand or so people um just good vibes bandmates first new york show so miku like when she went on stage she was like oh you know that whole thing she yeah, does yeah. and then like they were amped up to be in new york very fired up yeah and um that first night was awesome um i was a little towards the middle because you know i had to wait online but the second night was crazy because that was the vip ticket i had so there was the meet and greet plus it was only 200 people in like a small nightclub Oh wow! So, so how did the show, how did that meet and greet go? So <laughs> I was well um, prepared to like you know all right. So this is what I'm gonna say. This is what I'm gonna ask for. This is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. I have somewhere over there. I have the um, brand new made music book, mm -hmm. you know, with the sheet music and like the guitar stuff. So I brought that with me because I was gonna ask them to sign it for me. Yeah. So um, I was waiting online you know patiently i start to hear them in the background you know people talking yeah. to them asking them questions 
And by the time it becomes my turn, I wasn't noticing that they were there mm -hmm. because they were literally in a hole in the wall. Yeah. Like, oh, what? You know, That's it. crazy. There's a hole, and then there's a desk that pretty much takes up the whole hole, and then mm. behind that desk. So I'm walking, you know, walking with my little book, and then I stop because I hear them talking, and I turn, and it's all five of them right there behind the desk, kind of like in that hole. And just yeah. all like, staring at me. Uh, like this. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I, didn't have, I didn't have mental time to prepare, though. What do I do? So then yeah, I kind of yeah. like conjure up everything, gather myself, and I ask Psyche in Japanese, I'm like, can you? Oh, well, first I say hi. I'm like, hey, yeah, sorry. yeah. And then I asked her to sign the music book, and she was like, sorry, we can't sign that because um, we always have these cards to give out the fans. Oh. Which I actually think I was prepared for today. And not the first one. Mm. Let me see. So let's see. Yes. So this is the first card. I can take it out of the paper. Oh, uh, okay. So this is the very first card, like with the sign that they signed or whatnot. Yeah, this is from um 2019 show. 2019 um, show. Yeah. Yeah, That's that awesome. Mercury Lounge. Heck so yeah. that was uh that was so awesome. So they signed that in real time. They just put it out there. I watched each of them sign it, and then um. Yeah, that oh, was okay. a really, really cool night. But uh, yeah, that I kind of froze up. And then I had a card that I made for Miku. It pretty much said, like, thank you for inspiring me to uh, go back mm. to playing music. You guys are awesome. I'm so happy you finally came to New York. Uh, because I remember going on their comments when I first discovered them and just spamming, come to New York, please. <laughs> please come yeah, to New yeah. York. What so was it? That finally came here was awesome. Did you say yeah. anything else to the other members in the band? In Japanese, or did you try um, to talk to any of them? Or I think I was so unprepared, like I didn't think that they were right there, that I didn't have the yeah. mental time to like conjure up everything. Um, I think I know I spoke to Psyche and then Miku, and the rest of them kind of gave like a high too. Yeah. Um, they all seemed very nice. I yeah. would say, and then um, uh, Misa, she seemed nice, but she just kind of had like a really strong stare. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of paralyzed but, yeah um something i can I imagine I that too that first night in new york with the bigger show at uh, um irving plaza yeah um i was just waiting outside because of my train i had to wait for the train and yeah. i caught the band walking out to go to their um i guess their van to close mm. stuff up and go to the hotel yeah. so um if you watch my i think i did an interview with made news network a while back if you watch that i submitted the clips him so there's a point where he does show the clip it's cool because um you know they're a very like private group but as they're walking they're waving to me and then psyche and akane in particular like fully turn around and like give me like a wave and a thank you thank you oh that's so cool so and you cool to... oh and you videotaped all that wow yeah that's so awesome. um, i can show you later but uh it yeah was, heck yeah that was the first night but that second night you know having that happen first for the first night and then the day after that, meeting them, and then yeah. um, after that meet and greet, you know, we lined up to actually go inside and watch them play. But because the club was so small, they had to walk on the side of us to get to the stage. So there wasn't like a separate back way. Oh, they shit. went from the tables <laughs> that they were sitting at signing the autographs yeah. to going around the back. And then like we we already prepared for them because we see them yeah. walking, so we know they can go on stage. So then they walk, and we're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that show... Uh, oh, man. I think it was the same exact set list because I didn't want to, you know, disappoint any fans. Mm -hmm. But I was, uh, I would say, because I was in front of the speaker, I was right in front. I was about three feet away from Kanavi on the right yeah. side. So, like, if she turned the guitar out, she could probably whack me in the head. That's how that cool is that crazy. Was. So, man, that's awesome. So you got to see him, like, when they were very first starting. That's That's wild. Just thinking about that. Because, yeah, a lot of these bands, they start from that. You know, I feel like that's Hanabi on this last tour. I feel like mm -hmm. the opportunities that happened on this last tour are never going to happen again. Because they were just on the side of the stage watching. It's kind of funny because they said no to me the same way, like no to the picture or whatnot. Oh. But, th but then they mm -hmm. took one with me later. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> you should oh. ask enough or ask the right way. <laughs> yeah. I think it was, uh, they were only allowed to do it with press past people so like when i went to aftershock oh. i was able to yeah 
But um, I yeah, asked him on the side of the stage, but then I felt bad because it was like, oh, maybe I, was, I shouldn't have done that. I don't want other people to notice. Or, but no, they yeah. were super respectful. But it was really cool because they were watching the other bands play and stuff. Um, but yeah, hell yeah, man. Um, so you became a fan of Bandmade. I mean, I saw mm-hmm. I saw some Lark and Seal too that you. I, I mean, you listen to a lot of uh, different Japanese music. But what is your? Would you say is like your? Three go to bandmate, of course, and then what? What about oh, your yeah, two baby, others? Baby. Um, ooh, that's tricky. Who do you listen to oh, a lot? Tough. I would say now um, Nimofila is definitely climbing up that list. Yeah, um, because I also like some metal as well, so they're getting there as well. How do you feel about Nimofila's um, covers? Hmm, that's a great question. <laughs> I like them a lot. I feel like. Um, with Mayu, that's her name, right? Mayu's, yeah, Mayu. Um, yep. Singing style. Mm-hmm. Um, I like how each cover, she doesn't try to sound like that singer. She just sounds like herself. You yeah. Know? And she um just especially with like because I'm a Slipknot fan as well. When she did the sick cover or when they did the sick cover, yeah, I was blown away. I was like, this is like perfect because they kept nuances from the original song, but uh, then yeah. the guitars are a little bit. I think it might have been a higher tuning. Yeah, but it's different tuning for sure. And then Mayu's vocals just ripped the way that she does it, you know. Yeah. But then covers, um, and they did a K on cover. Speaking of that anime K on, they did a K on cover, and that one was one of the best K on covers I've ever seen because it's more metally, you know. They added their own flair to it, but um, I think their covers are really awesome, and, and I really hope that the um the metal community at large. Um, not only notices their covers, but actually like publicly acknowledges them. I'm not sure if they have or haven't already. Yeah, but um, I think a lot. I think yeah. a lot of the um, metal community, when it comes to Nemophilus, because the genres that they do, like yeah, they're they're metal, right? But then they have really not metal songs, you know, on the original <laughs> on their originals. They this last album was oh, just yeah. so many different genres. I love it. I love their last album. Can't wait for their new one to come out. I absolutely love those. Oh well, yeah, they got a new one out too. Ooh, a new yeah. one coming out. Yeah, yeah, that last album. Um, that's something I loved about them is because I listened to like anything from jazz to hip hop, R&B, rock, metal, same, um, blues. Um, seeing bands that are able to have that versatility to switch it up. I know a lot of people. You know, they expect like if you listen to metal, you wouldn't be able to head bang. You know, yeah. have a certain aesthetic, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's yeah, like. Yeah. Sometimes you got to have a little extra flavor in there. That's something that Nemophila does. And I think that's why, as much of a bandmate fan as I am, I feel like Nemophila in the West, if they keep doing what they're doing, uh, they're going to keep on gaining that traction, especially yeah. in the metal community. Um, and especially amongst like the younger generation. For sure. There's a lot of bands that are starting to um, get up there. Even um, I got a buddy that's in, do uh, you know Deadlands? It's a metal band called Deadlands. No, I don't. You check it out. It is solid. They're the singer. She's from this area. Um, that band is uh, they're they're getting a lot of um, a lot of traction. And I think they played at um, I want to say Blue Ridge. Did they play that? Blue Ridge. Yeah, they played okay. at one or two festivals recently. Yeah. Heck yeah. But um, I think like with Nimofila because they have that appeal and they're more like metally. That's definitely gonna play into their like um overall exposure here in the West. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, just bands like that that have versatility is cool. When like like Styles, one of my favorite songs, just hear yeah, that's scream, one of my favorites. And then, yeah, yeah, then start rapping and you start singing. Oh, yep. <laughs> I I love but, it. Yeah, so I love Styles. Like I, I love all the very new metal, like very feel type of music by them. I I love it. It's really good. What else have you been checking out or that you've been big into? Um, let's see. I do like Larkin Seal as well. Um, oh, Wagaki Band also. Um, probably the best live band. Maybe I should be careful saying that, but they might have been the most impressive live band that I've seen in person. Yeah. That band, they have so many people, and then they play their instruments so well, and they play a lot of traditional instruments too, which is also difficult. And yeah. The singer's range that she can hit is just. So you saw them live. You saw them. Yeah, they did. um, I have a feeling they're amazing live. I mean, you their their crowds are crazy. So I believe you. That's probably one of the best that you've seen live. I mean, because 
I've seen some of the footage and I'm like, wow, that's like a that's a whole spectacle what they have going on with that with that band. Yeah, they they opened with uh, there was this artist that was painting a koi fish for like mm-hmm. 15 minutes, and in the background <laughs> the band is just playing. What? And the flute player was just going crazy, and then they were, for 15 minutes they did a whole painting, signed it. They said, please, no photographs, no videos. It was for wow. Japan night of uh. That's that was, crazy, that was dude. That's like five or so years ago. Yeah, making the live painting while the band's playing, and then they rip it up, and you see the band. Yeah, and I was like, no way, that's wild. That is so really that cool. So that was um, that was dope. But it was cool because um, it was technically Hyde's show. You know, Hyde, the singer, yeah, from Larkin TL, and he's yep. part of the Last Rock Stars. Um, that was technically he was the big name, but I feel mm. like Wagaki bands like uh. Their energy was just so contagious. The crowd just, even if you didn't know them, we just got into it. Even if the crowd came for high, you're like, how yeah. do we not like this music? That was well. They have but, like um, the heaviest flute player ever. <laughs> yeah, that, he was. Um, <laughs> he's so into it. He's like all over the place. He's like the highlight. Yeah, he's he like, for me. I've he's never walking seen around. <laughs> oh, I've never seen someone rock out so hard on a flute. Yeah, me neither, man. And that's a traditional <laughs> flute at that. I was like, yeah, oh, man, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. wild. And then the shamisen player, she is like super fast, too. How, she's shredding on a shamisen. How yeah. do you do that? I don't know. Right. But um, uh, that's they're also up there. Um, I like Overworld. More so their older stuff, but okay. they're still a, a awesome band. Mm. Um, try to think of some more like. What kind of metal do you? Rock is solid as well. What kind of metal do you metal. lean towards liking when you lo- mm-hmm. when you look for metal? Is it more uh, of that Nemesis style? Uh, I would say so. Like just like you were mentioning, man, like the new metal style that like mm-hmm. angsty doesn't have to be the most technical yeah. playing, but just that raw emotion I like. Yeah. What but do you think also, about Sim? Um, have you listened to Sim? Oh, Sim. So <laughs> Sim is fire because I, I love yeah. Attack on Titan as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sim is wild. <laughs> Yeah. They were actually going to play here, and I think it was the night here in New York where we had insane flooding. So oh, the show no. I was going to go to got rescheduled, but then I like I think I had work or something. Then the day that oh, was rescheduled, no. on, I was so upset. I was like, oh, I was going to see them. Uh, that but for that me band, was probably ooh. my highlight show of the year. Really? So, oh, you yeah. saw them? Oh, shoot. Yeah, I saw them. And they weren't even the openers. <laughs> they were they yeah, were same opening. here. They were like the fourth band of the yeah. first of four or something like that. Yeah, same, it was that same, same tour? tour. Yeah, same tour. Oh, yeah, man. they're like the third band in. <laughs> uh, they were amazing. I mean, right. Baby Metal was great, but mm-hmm. Sim just has had this extra thing to them, you know? Oh, it was so good. It was so good. Of course, Band Maid was great too, but that it, I don't know. Just something about that Sim show, the energy was mm-hmm. just insane. The crowd reaction and everything. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe it could have been. It could have been for me, like maybe just, I don't know what it was. It's yeah, it was the energy was off the chart. You feel the energy, right? Like, when, like the other yeah. band's energy was good too, but these guys were, I mean, they were doing guitar spins and they're all in like their fifties. I was just like, Wait. what the heck? I like, know that, I, that's even crazier, dude. That yeah, that old. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's the guitar and basses I think up there. I don't know how old Ma is. I think Ma is one of the younger mm-hmm. ones, but yeah, he looks a little younger. Yeah, but yeah. wow. But the thing with Ma though, if you watch videos from like ten years ago, he looks exactly the same. <laughs> he doesn't he hasn't changed at all. He hasn't he changed at all. Um, sure. But yeah, that band. That band was good. Like they put a smile on my face, and that's a band that I like. I tell everybody all their stuff sounds better live, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that yeah. style I definitely like as well. Um, and then I think of my favorite uh, favorite metal bands. I do like Mastodon a lot. I've missed them every time they played in my area, but I just love that um, kind of they're more like progressive, right? That kind of like. Yeah, atmospheric sound, which layering a whole bunch of stuff, and then you just get bombarded with sound. I love that type of stuff. Yeah, you know that that band is a band I need to get into more. And the thing wild with Bastana is like all the singers <laughs> in that band, all oh. the great singers, like because all of them sing. I was, I was trying to find ages yeah. of these sim guys, and they don't have it on here. I didn't. Even, I guess they had a old, two old bassist and an old drummer. But eh, not too many lineup changes. It's been the same guitarist and vocalist the entire time. But anyways, yeah. That, but uh, 
that's such a good that's a, such a good band. Definitely check those, them out live if you have chance. Yeah, what do you Absolutely. think about Hanabi? Have you seen them yet? I have not. Um, I know they played here. And once again, I think I had like an obligation. I couldn't go. I mm. heard at least one of their songs. I know people were starting to show up like, oh, you listen to heavy metal, you listen to band made, you listen to Never Feel It. Mm-hmm. Here's Hanabi. Yet. Yeah. So um, I gotta honestly get more into them. I gotta start. D, uh, digging deeper into a lot of these newer yeah. bands that are you know, popping up because this is like this is their moment now. This is the time where especially Hanabi known. Yeah, oh, yeah. As you were telling me, I know. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, crazy man. how much they blow up. Think think TikTok for that one. <laughs> TikTok <laughs> definitely. Oh yeah, TikTok generation. Yeah. Yep. Um. Wow. What was I gonna say? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. It. I I lost my <laughs> I lost my train of thought. And uh, I forgot I was going to ask mm-hmm. you. So you have Jimi Hendrix behind you, and I'm a huge Jimi Hendrix fan. So I thought that was really awesome to have that behind you. So I got to ask you: Is that one of your favorite mm-hmm. artists or bands? Also, or like, yeah, a hundred percent. That guy. Um, that's one of the. Well, he's he was one of the. Um, in my opinion, probably one of the most influential, uh, not just guitar, but just artist ever to exist. Yeah. When you consider the short amount of time he lived, the amount of music he put out, the way he pioneered and revolutionized the way we play guitar today. Yeah. It's just yeah. out of this world. Literally, people always say, oh, he's like an alien. Like It's like he came from space. They put him here for like 27 years and <laughs> went back. You know? Took him back. But yeah. um, he's one of the guitarists that when I need motivation to play, I'll just look up a video of him playing, and then I'll just see it and say, all right, let me, let yeah. me start practicing. He, so I, sure, man. I did nothing but play Jimi Hendrix songs for so long, and I have an odd favorite song. It's called Manic Depression. It's one of my favorite I love, songs. Man, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, I love that song. song. I, I, um, that's like my go-to covers I do live when I sing and play. I, I do Manic mm-hmm. Depression and Purple Haze, of course, because mm. everybody knows that song. Ooh, but yeah. I, every time I want to write a solo, I just play my Jimi Hendrix solos <laughs> that I've learned <laughs> like over the years <laughs> because the amount of feel and vibe in his fingers is amazing, and that's how I like to play. Mm-hmm. I. I don't like doing nice. the whole shreddy thing. I I do a flashes of it, you know, and that's it's cool. Yeah, yeah it's cool yeah. to see. But I know what you mean, man. It's like that. Um, it's emotion, right? Like yeah. sometimes, and that's what that's what I'm also trying to do. I know I'm still. I consider myself like a beginner, almost mm. intermediate guitarist, to be very honest. But um, even with that, I have the same um the same way of, you know, thinking about music. I know that being technically impressive is freaking awesome that takes yeah. years of practice takes a lot of time yep. to get that good but um for regular people like if you're not a musician and you see that you'll think that's really cool but if it doesn't make you feel anything then it's yeah. hard to grab that you know that yep. person so having that feel you know that helps the crowd get into it helps the crowd feel you and you know what you're trying to express which is awesome yeah so, yeah uh yeah there's like a lot of guitars uh, and another one of my favorite guitars i love um, of course, is like Konami. She has that feel oh, with her yeah. with her playing, right? She has a very oh, yes. and she does things that are outside the box of um, playing leads and things like that. Another guitarist, one of my all time favorites, Sinister Gates from Veg Sevenfold. Absolutely, oh, Sinister Gates is yeah, he's amazing, amazing man. Yeah, I just uh, even off Isn't this. He- is he a lefty? One of the one of the two is a lefty. One of them is no, it's the other guy. I forget his name. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, um yeah. uh ah, Vengeance, right? Yeah, Zachy Vengeance. Yeah, I, I yeah. forget that he's left hand, and he's a hell of a singer. Have you heard the covers that he does? He did a bunch of misfits mm, covers. Those, he actually can sing pretty well, man. It's crazy mm. that that band is multi talented. I, I saw them. Uh, you know what? That was a really good concert too. That was one of my favorites too this year at Aftershock. They they crushed it. Oh, you went? You saw them at Aftershock? I saw them at Aftershock and in ooh, Nashville. Fish and Fools is like one of my favorite bands, man. I got back into them. Live. I never thought I would get back into that band. I think it's the only American band I can think of that's really intriguing to me. Or like, really? Yeah, I can't think of another. I mean, Mastodon was a good example. I like, when's the last time they put out something? You know. Um, I want to say it's been a while, a right? Ago? I haven't kept up. They could have put out something recently, but from my recollection, yeah. about 
maybe two years ago. Yeah. That's long ago. I'm about to say, wait, no, there's some other bands, but when I but they're all UK bands. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about yeah. it, I'm like <laughs> You're thinking American, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like thinking American. I'm like, no, and then and then like and then I have my favorite. One of my favorites is Protesta Hero. They're from Canada. So I'm like, oh, I was okay. like, yeah, wh- where's the American band? <laughs> I was like, I tried to think yeah, of well, it. Well, that's another thing about these yeah. Japanese bands, right? Um, I yeah. know because you got to meet you know, all these, a lot of these Japanese bands, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one thing is that they, they may not realize this, but um, them coming over here and putting a stamp on rock and showing that it doesn't matter where you come from, you know. Rock mm-hmm. is universal. The fact that they're coming over here and they're killing it, you know, they made sure I uh, sold out the U.S. tours. Yeah, yeah baby metal. They, when they come here, they always have um, huge crowds that come to see them. It's um, it's a big market. Yeah, it's a big opportunity there, and I feel like um, yeah, I'm a little biased honestly because you, yeah. you play guitar, guitar, instruments. Well, I like instruments. I got know? a question. So, that, <laughs> I got a question. Yeah. Throw at you. So for me, Literally. um, one thing that I love about this discovery of Japanese music in general is that when I heard Maximum the Hormone for the first time on the channel, oh, we checked that out, and we started going down this rabbit hole, right? Bay Metal, mm-hmm. Bandmade, and all these other bands. The thing that my biggest takeaway from it was, oh, there is an audience that likes different and weird music. Because <laughs> before I started the channel... With Dicotic, if you listen to our like last EP, mm-hmm. it's weird, but it didn't jive with a lot of people here in Texas, right? Because it wasn't mm-hmm. stereotypical metal. So, you know, Japanese music, like not only does it inspire me to keep playing and writing music, but just give me hope to keep doing what I want to do instead of just following like, oh, I got to play this because, you know, this is what people want. And it kind of, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, there is an audience out there that does love weird stuff. So... I honestly feel there will be American bands that start following in the footsteps of some of the Japanese bands with some weirder, maybe more progressive music. Like, because mm-hmm. even at least they're in the North American region. I mean, there was Protest a Hero at one point. That, and I mean, they're still together. Fortress was an insane album. And that would be something like that I hear would hear from Japan now. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like hearing something like Maximum Hormone is like, what? This is just insane. Um, but how do you feel about all that? Like with Japanese music, how do, how would you say it has inspired your playing or your music pl- playing or whatnot? I would say um, part of the reason why I kind of fell off of guitar, honestly, was as I practiced this is back in my right-handed days. So um, I kind of reached an apex of how fast I can play, and I mm. thought, man, maybe it's just you know I'm more of like a thinner guy. Maybe it's just like you know I don't have that you know that middle uh, you know. Mm. Playing, you know, I think of like um, Mono Marth, you know, big dude playing <laughs> yeah, on yeah. guitar, going crazy. And you had a then, mental um, block. Yeah, so it was a mental yeah. block, right? And then yeah. when I saw a bandmate, and then when I saw them in person, when I met Konami and saw her, like, she's person, and she shreds with power, mm-hmm. with um, technique, and also with um, emotion, as you mentioned. So yeah. when I saw that band, I was like, why am I making excuses? Let me try yeah. this again. Let me, you know, try a different technique. Let me try a different way of thinking about it, yep. a different way of practicing. And um, there's always a way, right? Yeah, there's always a way. And then I started listening to much more Jimi Hendrix. And yep. um, that also helped too, because just the way that he thought about composing, the way he mm. organized his notes, and how he would make mistakes, but he, he's making mistakes because he's trying to just feel it out, you know? Yeah. That's something that I tried to also incorporate into my playing. But um yeah, those types of bands really help reignite my passion. So I like to tell people I'm like, my goal is to be like uh Konami Hendrix. <laughs> Pretty much <Yeah>. have that <laughs> yeah. style of emotion. Yep. You know, obviously I play left handed guitar now. Um have that type of emotion with um a lot of Jimmy's nuances and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he... <sighs> Yeah, I still listen to Jimi Hendrix. Like I, that never gets old. That was like oh, my yeah. that was like my coping music when I was younger. That was my uh, I need a that and the Doors. Like I, I remember oh, when nice. I <laughs> just was discovering like older music, you know. And I remember it was those two bands, like nonstop repeat. That that and Fog Hat. It was Fog Hat Doors. Oh, and, and, yeah, random bands, right? Like I don't even know how yeah. it was. Like it was just, but the way that the lead guitarist would like play 
it was uh, a different mm-hmm. kind of it was just so much soul in it like I, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it like I really like way to put it. style of playing it's I I play in I'm coming from a person that like I play power metal you know I I, mm-hmm. I absolutely love that I did the shredding I went through those phases like of like I was like Da-da-da! riff after riff after riff <laughs> i remember i joined with a band called march of chronos and i couldn't like you said i had a i had that block i was like dude how do i get faster and he taught me he's like i get your hands close to the fretboard like this and i'm like oh dude. like started doing the shredding but yeah it's like but i think the happy meeting is like what you hear in like an event sevenfold song or here in a bandmate mm-hmm. song like they do a little bit of each like the shreddy and feely and all that stuff in between you know and mm-hmm. uh they have it down Another totally guitarist it. I always forget to talk about too is Slash. That was another. That was another oh, one person I looked up to all the Slash. time. Slash. Yeah. <laughs> How could you not? Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. But, um. So something I noticed too about like my favorite guitarists. Um, I think three or four of them all are PRS brand guitarists. <laughs> yeah. Which is economy. Yeah. Um. I I love Living Color, one of my most favorite bands. Oh my god! Forget about Living Color. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Vernon Reed plays PRS, and then I did not know that. You know, Economy's one of Economy's biggest influences is um Santana. He plays PRS. Santana. <laughs> he was, I think, it, the yeah. first PRS artist. Yep. I think he made the guitar for him. Right. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Santana. So, you remember? Uh, how, how old are you? <laughs> uh, if you want to say, <laughs> oh okay, yeah. oh you're Eric's, you're like around Eric's age, okay, yeah. So you still you remember some '90s music then? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So you remember when Santana sure. came out with his album, and oh, it was Supernatural. Yeah, yeah, and it was all other singers yeah. like Matchbox Twenty, yep. like what is it, Christina Aguilera? Yeah, like all these other singers, right? I I never. Is there another guitarist that's ever done that? Like, wrote a fucking album with all different singers and had multiple hits, like hit songs on the radio. Like, I can't think of any. Like, maybe, but I can't think of any. <laughs> he had that's he had so many hits. hits. Like that that guitar. Like Santana is crazy. Like, he's like, I'm not gonna join any. I'm gonna do my solo album, but get all these famous singers on it. It was. I mean that's impressive, you know. I mean, very impressive. Uh, I, yeah, like the song was called "Smooth," right, with Rob Thomas from Matchbox mm-hmm. Twenty. I, that's the one that stands out to me the most. But mm-hmm. he did so many of them, I can't even remember. I was gonna look it up. Uh, I, yeah, what was the name of the album? You said it earlier. I think you said it right. It might have been Supernatural. I don't know. Supernatural if it was that one or yeah, a studio, different one because that was like right around two thousand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it was that one. But um, Maria Maria was on that one. Yeah, that's you know? the supernatural. For sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, man. it was it was wild. I remember seeing that, and I remember I was watching uh, MTV or some one of those mm-hmm. uh, VH1, and just seeing all of his uh, songs, and you always saw him like it was a different mm-hmm. singer, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like that's that's impressive. That's, man. that's, that's impressive. to be honest, that's probably my goal. Like I do want to learn how to sing. Quite honestly, I can yeah. keep a note, but I'm not a singer. Um, yeah. is to be able to just have that influence where the emotional effect of your guitar can be felt no matter who's singing behind it. You just got to get the right person yeah. to join you, and then you start going. Yeah. But that's a really good point, man. I can't think of another guitarist that just has an album with hits yeah. <laughs> where they're yeah. playing and then number one singer. too like number one yeah. hits <laughs> number one hits <laughs> like and i don't know if it i'm not gonna say it can't happen again i just think that the landscape of uh popular music at least out here you mm-hmm. know is uh we're at an era where having an instrumentalist on your album yeah would it make a big difference even though to us it will you know musicians yeah. you obviously appreciate other musicians that play instruments but there's um, a, that's something that I don't know if it'll happen again. That's, I mean, Rage Against the Machine, Tom Morello, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he had the baby metal song. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's he did, he did uh, Audio Slave, which is mm-hmm. massive. But yeah, but that's only two bands. It's just, it's just crazy that Santana just had an album, <laughs> just yeah, like all these hits. Album. Yeah, hits. Um, yeah, it's just yes. crazy. But um, that's awesome. What what other what other Japanese mm-hmm. bands you been checking out lately, or you just mainly been? Oh, Baby Metal, man! How did you discover Baby Metal? Oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't even so talk about Baby that. Metal. <laughs> is very interesting because just like Bandmate, I kind of um, when I first saw them, I was like, oh boy. So, um, <laughs> so you already know my age now. Um, 
Tuzuka yeah, <laughs> is uh, I think a year younger, two years younger than me, pretty close to my age. Yeah. So okay. when I first discovered them, I was in high school, and they were like, um, because I know the two younger members were like two years younger than okay. Two metal. So, I forget um, that they're, they're like, like middle school, high school. Yeah, they're in their mid twenties now, right? <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. I think um, Sue, Sue's birthday should be Sue, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm a fan. Um, yeah, she's close to my age, so. Um, it was kind of crazy when I was in high school. I was like, twenty five. First when I saw them, yeah. First when I saw the band, I mean, yeah, I mean, she's uh, yeah, pretty close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. December twentieth uh, is her birthday. Oh, nice. Well, happy yeah. birthday. She's gonna, watch, <laughs> she's gonna watch the stream. She's going to because she's she going to her, five more days of her birthday. Yeah. I I always know it's near Christmas. That's that's, that's mm-hmm. about all I remember. I don't know how all these fans remember all the dates of birthdays. Like I've been... see, hers is different because you know it's one person, and as you said, it's near Christmas. But yeah. uh, that's a uh, that definitely is its own skill within itself, right there. Remembering <laughs> birthdays, I can't remember like. Yo. Sometimes my family's birthday, my friends. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, know. It's like, I, I can't even do that. And some people get mad at me. They're like, "You don't remember the?" I'm like, "Dude, come on, man." <laughs> a lot of birthdays, man. It's 365 like, days. I'm a and we fan. We have holidays too. This is why. <laughs> this is why I hate telling people I'm like I'm a big fan of something because I'm like, well, I mean, I guess not according to some people because some people like know birthdays, where they yeah. grew up, what city they're born in. I'm like, wow. And honestly, shout out to you for having that great memory. You fan out there that have amazing skills to remember all that. I don't know oh, how yeah. they do it. I don't. I don't know. I can remember songs I though. Know. I can learn thirty songs in a week, no problem. But I can't do that's birthdays. Actually, <laughs> I can't do impressive. birthdays. But yeah, we all have our, uh, our strengths and weaknesses, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, like, um, so I was back in high school, and keep in mind, as you know, like Sue Metal is near my age so yeah um first i was like all right i'm in high school they're in middle school uh this is really interesting i was never thrown off by the idol aspect because i was already exposed to idol culture and i already was exposed to metal so it wasn't like either thing threw me off it was just seeing the combination of it but also seeing those crowds i was watching uh what show did they play either the london show back in this is because I was in high school, I think like 2014, and mm-hmm. or um, or like the uh, I think they played at I want to say Rock on the Range, one of those like Midwestern yeah, yeah. festivals. And I remember seeing videos of them performing and seeing mosh pits of grown burly men beating the crap out of each other, <laughs> while two high school or three high school girls in a band. I was like, yo. <laughs> I feel this though. I feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> Just that image that stuck out to me. And unfortunately, I missed out on those shows um, back then. I wanted to see them back in 2014, 15, oh. at the first New York show at Hammerstein, which yeah. you actually got to see them in Hammerstein, yep. which is yeah. pretty fire. And you met them. You went that to that show though, right? The Hammerstein? Yes. I, yeah, we yeah, met I up saw again. You there. For a split yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, I saw you. And you were like, you were like, <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was pretty <laughs> shook. <laughs> I was pretty shook. Yeah. <laughs> For good reason. Yeah you, were I think. <laughs> yeah, you were like in a whole nother world. Man. Yeah. But um, that show was also awesome. So that was my first time seeing them, honestly, as well. Oh, wow. So what did you in the area? What did you think seeing them for your first time? Uh, I was a little disappointed that I didn't get to see the original lineup because, as uh. I was mentioning, I followed them since like high school. Damn, but, um, yeah, that's true, huh? I got more into them, honestly, this year. Like, back when their first album came out, I listened to their music, I was into it, but then I kind of fell off uh, as, you know, life went on. But then this year, I yeah. got back into them, which was good timing, because that um, Death Clock or Baby Clock yeah. um, tour happened. But um, seeing them in person was very impressive. I was most impressed by how they sound the same, if not better live, which yeah. is very difficult to do. Especially yep. when you're singing at the same time as dancing. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, exactly. And um, obviously seeing um, the members or well, the two main members and the new member, more mm-hmm. so the two main members, um, seeing them be older, but also still keep you know their voices and sing and add new flares to their songs. And just their stage presence is so like strong. Yeah, so David strong. For such a long time. I thought about it. I was like, back when I was in high school, what the heck, what was I doing? 
I wasn't on stage in front of tens of thousands of people singing and dancing. Like you said earlier, like (laughs) making big burly dudes mosh into each other. Making big burly dudes smack into each other like that. I wasn't doing that. You know what I'm saying? So that put into perspective, like them being so close in age to me, especially the with um, the main singer with Suzuka being so close, and then seeing her. Wow, like now she's been doing this for ten years, pretty much, and. Like the stage presence, their stage presence was amazing. The sound was amazing. The outfits look even better. Um, and the yeah. crowd too, because you were in that show. That crowd yeah. was very diverse. There were yeah. young, old, different groups of people. Yeah, like different we backgrounds. still backgrounds. I keep telling people that with Bay Middle Show is very diverse. It very, it really is. But you still get those comments, man. Well, just yeah, re- just recently, them. just recently, they were like. We we addressed Uh-oh. an is- an issue with like they're pretty much calling people are fans of baby metal. They're a bunch of pedophiles. Just recently, Uh-oh. somebody put out a video like that, what? and I'm like, uh... so I'm not gonna get into that. You guys can watch my video on that, but uh, yeah, it was yeah, like I-, I can give some perspective on it. If you... Yeah, go ahead. I mean, yeah, yeah. What's your perspective? They're around on my it? age, so it doesn't really apply to me in the same yeah. sense. But well, apparently you're still a pedophile though. I don't know how, but. <laughs> Yeah, same age as me, but yeah, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Anyways, what's your perspective, uh, again, though? <laughs> yeah, I'll give it some perspective. So, like, living in Japan, idol culture is like that. A lot of the idols, um, mm-hmm. especially, like, the girl groups, they're going to be younger. And the industry, to be honest, I feel like isn't the best. There's things that they can definitely improve on. But the idea For of, sure. like, middle-aged men going to see girls on stage, in Japan at least, it's very normal. Now, is it a good thing? I can't say, oh, okay. but is it uh, is it culturally normal? Yes, because that's just the the way things are. Um, kind of the same way that with K-pop, right? A lot of these, yeah. Um, more so the boy groups, because if you notice, it's interesting with K-pop girl groups, they have a lot of female fans, right? Yeah. But with K-pop boy groups, they also have a lot of female friend, uh, female fans. Yeah. So it's like the K-pop industry is really geared towards that, and it's the same thing. You have a lot of um, I went to a K-pop show and yeah. Um, I didn't really know the group that much, but I tagged along with one of my cousins. I was like, yeah. yeah, I'll go. I love music. Like, it's their first show in New York. Yeah, I'll go. And the think crowd about... was like, this... "Go mm-hmm. ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead." What's up? No, oh, yeah, no, go ahead, The crowd no, was no. like, "Yeah, it's like um, there's a good amount of women that are older, but yeah. once again, I guess it's a different dynamic. But um, at least in Japan, just seeing the yado culture, like it's really normal. So I feel like in the U.S., that's not normal." You know, yeah. see, uh older guys. And sometimes, let's be real, those people do exist. Let's be very honest. They are exactly. out there, you know. And that could be a driving yeah. force as to why they like the group. Yes, it could be. But it could be at why the end of the day I gotta say this though. It could be yeah. why those groups are so self conscious about getting the hell off stage and running. You know what I mean? Because ah. Hanabi Hanabi disappeared like right away. Like they got off stage, they were gone. You know, and uh-huh. then you don't see baby metal afterwards. <laughs> like they That's a good see, honestly, man, I didn't think about that. I'm trying to think of like offhand if I've been to any shows where like the demographic was different and it wasn't still a Japanese band. Yeah. Um let me see. Yeah, that's actually a re- that's a great point you brought up. I didn't think about that. Um yeah. let's see, I saw Scandal twice as well in New York. Scandal um, their fans are a little kind of more like baby metal because they're more of like a poppy group. They do have a lot of um, they were diverse, fans. like baby metal was. Yeah, yeah, a little more so. Yeah, they definitely have um, more female fans and just younger fans in general, just because the nature of their music is more pop. Yeah, yeah, like pop rock, you know. And I, their Japanese crowds are the same too. If you look up a Scandal show in Japan, it's like all ages vibing out. Yeah, Hanabi mm-hmm. was different. Like Aftershock was way variety. I can't remember in I can't remember in Iowa if they were or not, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, but but bands like Nemophilo is definitely mainly guys for sure, one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Bandmate too, you know, it was mainly it was mm-hmm. mainly guys also that some of the, most of the shows I went to, mm-hmm. except well, for Nickelodeon place. Yes, in I'll New Jersey. That. Yeah, were you at that show? Yeah, I was at that show. Yep. Oh, you there too? Yeah, I was yeah, there yeah. as well. That show. I was the guy that took the uh, the roller coaster video because I was uh, lagging behind. Oh, okay. so, uh, if you look <laughs> yeah. up a video on YouTube, I think mine might have the at least close to the most views. Yeah, I was just waiting around at that merch line, and I was like, "Okay, let me get the CD," and then I hear, it. "Yeah." So uh, huh? you have it on your YouTube channel? 
of you. Oh yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. Um, but you know, while I'm yeah, looking uh, for this, mm-hmm. make sure you guys follow yeah. him. Okay, at his YouTube channel, he has a lot of content up here. He has some bandmate stuff up here, bay metal clips. He's got you playing. Um, I remember watching one of your clips mm-hmm. where you're like went out to a crowd member or something, or you talked to a crowd member. I don't remember what it was, but oh, um, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, you, it, I think it was during. Was. Uh, this what what's thundercat is that like your band oh no thundercat is in my opinion one of the best bassists on the planet that man he's a he's more of like well he's interesting because i think he originally oh, this is an artist band. this is an artist that yeah. you were uh, so filming there okay. was a guy at that show there was a guy um so there's a song here it has called um dragon ball durag check out that song if you like like r&b or um, okay, I'll like check it out. Music. That song is hilarious because it's like a whole meme song. He puts on uh, a Dragon Ball do rag, like a do rag with Dragon Balls on it. Okay, and he's like vibing the whole video. So that guy at the show made a whole painting based off of that, oh, and they okay. let him bring it to the show. And then I was right next to him. I was talking to him, vibing out. And when Thundercat was playing that song, when the song came on, he put the painting up. Yeah, and yeah. Stopped the show. He's like, "Hey, give me that." <laughs> what is that oh hell That's yeah it's amazing man yep. yeah you have some bandmate covers on here too you did time rhythm oh, guitar yeah maroon five i think a lot of the older ones i honestly probably removed because i'm just trying to you know reorganize my playing get a little stronger but i know i might have kept the one and only cover from 2019 up i think that might still be a, like the first video on my channel i see actually. you got a purple haze cover on here Oh yeah, Purple Haze. Yeah, I played that um at one of the student jams. Uh, my teacher, the guitar teacher, hosts a jam for the students of all ages. So ah. I was like, "Hey, I love Hendrix. Yeah, I play guitar lefty. Purple Haze. Yeah, hell yeah. I I love playing that song, singing and playing that song. It's so fun. Oh uh, yeah, it's I found your bandmate song. roller coaster one right here. Is this them on it? That's them on it. Yeah. So uh, what happened at that show was um um the merch line right they were trying to get people out fast and i thought it was just because you know it's a theme park they're trying to clear people out so i ended up at the very end of the merch line for some odd reason just waiting you know as i'm watching all the stuff i wanted yeah. sadly to get sold out but um <laughs> yeah so i hear yeah. i hear the rides moving and that's normal because i've been around theme parks at night and they test their rides out yeah, but yeah. then i hear screaming and i'm like no way i just grab my phone i'm like let me see no way and then security lines up. Yeah. There's a wall of security and they're blocking it off because as oh, you yeah, can see there, there uh, they were on the roller coaster and they saw us too. They saw a few of the fans that were still That's there. That's so cool. And they, yeah. were, they were waving at us. We were like, yeah, and they were waving at us. So that show was really memorable for many reasons. Uh, just the uniqueness of playing in. Wait, are you like up front on this? Oh, that's not me. That was somebody else. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was uh I was close enough. I was um if Konami would have threw her pick a little further, I would have caught it. But mm. um oh speaking of picks, the night we went to at what was that Urban Plaza, right? The New York show? Or what the one I'm looking at right here is New Jersey. It says New- Oh, just yeah, somebody Jersey. else's uh clip. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it Two went days to- before yeah, that New York show was at Irving Plaza, right? I might actually say it on my channel too. Yeah, a few clips from that show. I think so. Um, yeah. So during the show, you know, they throw out the picks and stuff, and uh-huh. I was on Miku's side, and she took the pick in my general direction, right? Uh huh. And I was like, "Uh, I saw the pick go kind of in my area, but then it disappeared." And I started mm-hmm. going to the ground to look for it. So then yeah. I, uh, people started giving up. So I went down and started looking. I saw a little shimmer. Oh, uh, oh! You got it right hard to there. See, I have it in the case, but yeah, I can take it out the case. If necessary, that's cool. It's uh, yeah, I wish I could focus the camera. Yeah, that's so that's pretty good. Get that in there. Oh, uh, it's like a there little art design for those listening. This yeah. pick looks amazing looking. <laughs> that's a badass yeah, pick. Is that a whale? Her, and it's cool because I got lucky. Yeah, the Wait. pick because you know she loves sharks, right? I think Miku's a big shark fan. And she has a little pigeon oh, above the shark. Oh, a pigeon and then a shark. Oh, that's Miku's and pick. And it has a number, too. Yeah, 39. I don't know if it's like the sizing, millimeters, or her like... Yeah, that's the millimeters. Yeah, yeah probably... F- and I, then I think. the cool part, which I like, is that on this side, you can see like her signature. Oh, shit. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, that's yeah, badass. this pick was... Not that this... Some of the picks I was comparing with some other people. So had, this like, is a pick she pick. threw out, right? Yeah, this is from that New York show that I um, yeah, for met, those, met you at. For those listening, it's 
It says bandmate. It has a shark with a pigeon above it, and it has her sting- signature on the back of it. That's pretty cool. Awesome, man. That's cool. Yeah, so that's I have that a little stand back here next to my bandmate. You know, it was a uh, so, that was a memorable are, night. So, are you in any bands right now, or? Um, not currently. I do sometimes jam out with friends, and as I mentioned, I do take I do I take lessons. But right now, I'm just trying to tighten up my playing a little more. And then yeah. I want to start just putting out some soul stuff, collaborating with people um, online and um, offline. Yeah, um, nice. I definitely want to make some music. I You've like done some, some collabs music, for Bandmade uh, for the BMCD chord, right? You did some with Orange. Oh, yeah. yeah, you did a c- couple of chords. I did. Let's see, what did we do? I think it's been four now, four or five. It was Time Acoustic. That was the first one I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, that had Nam singing in that one. And then um, we did... I did the bass for Freezer. Yeah. Mm. That was a fun one. And then we did About Us. Okay. As well. Man, and, you did a lot. And um, Evergreen, which was really fun because that was one of the first songs I tried to learn from Bandmade. Ironically, it's not very famous, but I like the little uh, little lead intro. I'm trying to... I, yeah, I'm seeing it right here, the uh, guitar mini cover that you have posted up on your... Um on your channel or is, yeah, yeah this is your channel yeah and we did a group one um that one came out i think a few months ago okay uh, nice that was really fun but that one was cool because a lot of fans in the comments of um rng's uh youtube they were like oh i didn't know this song or i'm not as familiar with it but this is a great cover guys and that was kind of cool to, you know i, song I really, really can't really recall that song i can't recall at all evergreen evergreen yeah, by bandmate song. yep Ever- from the first album Oh, uh, okay. Shout out okay. to the 10th anniversary of Bandmade, you know, 10 years. Yeah. Yep. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for joining me and doing this podcast. I really appreciate it. Is there uh, anything you want to say before I let you go? Anything you want to say to fans or? Well, first, once again, I want to thank you for having me on here. Um, you know, it's been awesome to talk to you, get to know you more. And um, I know we ran into each other at least a few times already, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, it's yeah. been at least two or three times at yeah. this point. But yeah. um, yeah, I really do appreciate you having me on here, man. Um, as he brought up, you know, I do have my socials. I'm mainly on YouTube and Instagram. If you want to follow me there, but um, I'm just really happy to be a part of this community. Uh, because these bands, uh, they're amazing and seeing that there's so many people that are starting to recognize these bands and realize um how much of an influence they're going to have on the future of music Mm -hmm. Japanese bands that we you know know and love it's just uh something that we really should keep pushing they do get a lot of recognition but you know a lot of times word of mouth is the best at the end of the day and being able to be a part of this community and be a voice in it has been really amazing and being able to meet tons of people has been great too, yeah you know people that we met online and then it's like oh you exist in real life oh my god <laughs> you know it's been a great journey so D- did you so ever watch fun. reaction channels before this or um for music not really quite honestly yeah. um more so just because of uh i guess my attention span <laughs> but uh um, yeah 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 not so much but Seeing that there's actually a market for it, I thought about doing it myself, quite honestly. I may or may not. We'll see where that goes. But mm-hmm. I think it's so cool that um, just off of that alone, seeing reaction videos and the traction that they've gotten and how you guys have, uh, you guys have. Yeah. How did you discover people into it? You know, how did you discover uh, myself or any of the other guys and stuff like that? How did you discover us? in person i believe or no maybe in passing on the um bandmate discord because i know they do post um like interviews and oh, stuff okay. like that uh, from you guys and uh either i saw it on there i think it was on there yeah on there I oh, okay started to see um with, with the you and ryan i started to see that i was like oh okay and then you guys were there in person i saw people walking up to you and i was like oh oh yeah i know these guys <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, it took me awesome. a second i was like Cause you know that day, I think you guys were doing um, was it an interview or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, playing. yeah, the interview yep. that didn't get approved. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that sucks. Oh. Well, uh, we'll see where that goes. I'll just yeah. say that. Yeah. All right, see you all later. Right, Sue. Right, guys, peace. <laughs>